In today's Community Build interview, I am chatting with Kevin, who recently built two really beautiful trellises that came out great. In the interview, we talk about the materials used and some techniques. Also, you can learn how you can make your own custom trellises as well. Shout out to Kevin for coming on and sharing his builds with us. And uh, let's get into the interview. How long have you been gardening? Uh, for the last five or six years, uh, we recently moved um, to, the, to this home where you see now where I have sunlight for the first time. And then nice. uh, we uh, actually added, added a garden box in the back. And then just my excitement to utilize every square inch uh, is what uh, <laughs> resulted in those trellises back there. So you've got two trellis designs here. Uh, you've right. got this one. I'm kind of calling it a box trellis, which is a really common way that we see people do it where they have their garden bed and they build a box around it. And yep. then, then you've got another one that I, I've just been calling the vertical trellis, uh, just because, I mean, I, I know they're all vertical trellises, but <laughs> just the way yeah. you've got it designed, um, this is really cool. Well, so the, the box trellis in front is for tomatoes and you can see that the, the strings coming down mm -hmm. and there are some clips in the bottom. And as they grow, my plan is to pull off the sucker leaves and, and just go straight, straight vertical. And that goes to uh, eight feet tall, which is something that I measured during the build by laying down next to a pipe, mm -hmm. extending my arm up as tall as it would go, which uh, for me, the maximum I can reach is eight, eight, eight feet. So that's where I set the, uh, the, the height of the bar. So those would, there's about 12 or so tomatoes planted there. So it'd just be a wall of uh, tomatoes going straight up. Nice. Uh, the, 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 the box in the back, the vertical trellis, um, those kind of two squares mm -hmm. are for uh, cherry tomatoes so i actually took a piece of cattle panel which is mm -hmm. kind of flat put a board along it and then bent it to make those two to, uh, and then when oh. combining two two l, l shapes together created what is like a probably about a five foot um a massive kind of heavy duty uh cherry tomato cage okay so those 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 are for the sides. Mm -hmm. I have two two young boys who uh, and and a, a mother in law who love those cherry tomatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, in between is just space for climbing things. So uh, on the left is for beans, where you see those um, uh, those kind of threaded lines going mm -hmm. down. And on, on the right is about a half inch um, uh, half inch screen pattern which would be for climbing things like peas. Um, there's okay. nothing in the, in the background there, but I think you could probably see maybe behind me mm -hmm. since that photo was, was taken, there's been some growth. So nice. you can actually see one of the peas starting to go up it. And kind of going back here, I, I the sketch that you sent, yep. I can see here that you, you kind of made that plan. You, you wrote out all the different plants that you had and how many of each plant, which is really detailed and a good way to do it. And then you kind of broke down the two different designs. And then uh, characterized based on the type of connector. Is it a T? Is it a three-way? Is it a four-way, et cetera? Mm -hmm. So then I could get uh, the, the, the counts right to order parts. And for what you see behind was uh, 14 pieces of uh, a 10-foot conduit is what was um, required for this build. Okay. So that's about conduit, at least where we are in South Carolina, is around like $10 a 10-foot stick right now. Yep. So about $140 that's right. for conduit. That's right. Not too bad. Then I think you shared... Here's your yeah exactly that, that that was the the order so uh, uh, combining this with the conduit plus the paint that was the the full uh, uh, the, the the full build plan do you, do you kind of have a rough idea of what the total cost was maybe of everything um, so the uh, I believe the um, the parts from Maker Pipe were mm -hmm. in the zip code of like 140 maybe 150 dollars but mm -hmm. I was also buying some one one time things like your your cutting tool mm -hmm. or the um, the, the hex wrench. So without those might've been more in the zip code of like 110 or so. Nice. Not a lot of connectors and not too much conduit. I mean, for two trellises, that's not bad. Yeah. And they're 14, the, these, these particular boxes are just over 14 feet and just under three feet, three feet wide. And as you were mentioning, one of the things I really liked is that I could customize something to the box, to the types of plants that we grow. Um, I like that the conduit is uh, lightweight because mm -hmm. between seasons, I would like to take it out and shovel in uh, composted chicken manure or other types of um, amendments for the soil. Um, I also thought it would be easier to paint uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to wood. And then I just like the, uh, the um, aesthetics of uh, working with, with uh, metal. So you painted everything before building, yeah. is that right? I, I did it. Uh, I, I, I did building and one before building um they were um i, I think before building was uh 
a, a, li a little easier uh, mm -hmm. just because I could just very quickly go back and forth with the spray paint can, but mm -hmm. it didn't, it, it didn't make too much difference. Okay. Yeah. I was curious about that. I didn't know if you, if you tried both ways, but I guess even if you did have issues once it was put together, if there, you know, it got dinged up, a little, whatever, you, you could just go back and touch it up. Yeah. Which is probably a lot easier than doing the whole thing. <laughs> it's up, especially if it's eight foot tall and you're, you're climbing up That's the right. ladder. <laughs> and, and then especially there's um, uh, the feet go down uh, about maybe eight inches mm -hmm. into the soil or so. Okay. So especially, especially on the, the vertical one, that isn't a, uh, it wasn't a shape that, liked to be stood straight up mm -hmm. um so that um uh um made it a little awkward for the uh painting in advance which is why on the second one i just painted the parts um first i see okay nice yeah i was curious about that so yeah i'm glad you sent over these photos and here you you painted the cattle panels as well that's right and, and then if you imagine just laying like a six foot two by four or something down the middle. Mm -hmm. I just lifted one end and just kind of bent it into that L shape. And then when combining the two L shapes is how I got those uh, tomato towers on, on both sides of that, um, of that vertical trellis. That's great. Yeah. That's a, a great technique. I think people, I haven't really seen too many people do that, but I think it's a really smart way to do it that I'm sure people will find useful. Um, well, and then for, for me, um, uh, the, tomato plants, cause we, we have a long growing season here in California mm -hmm. uh, going five foot, five foot six foot is is no problem and some of the cages uh, you'd find like at a, a home depot might uh top out like at four feet so then mm -hmm. by the time that something's exposed it's only three plus feet so i i just right. wanted something because i was investing in it for um, with, with good durable materials wanted something that was healthy just in case those um we we have uh, a good season on those cherry tomatoes nice yeah I mean, cattle panels i think are really underrated for trellises in general even if you just use them how they are just you know flat but in the way you've used them is really smart as well and uh here so i guess this is the what i'm calling the vertical trellis this, like that singular <laughs> wall in the that's, middle that's right so this is me for the first time just kind of laying it out and th this is where i realized but my original plan um was okay i'll, I'll use the, the full the full 10 foot height mm -hmm. um of the uh of of the conduit and then I had the realization that's like, wait a minute, I won't be able to reach up to pick off a bean or a tomato. Oh, right. So I, I would have uh, laid down right there on the garage floor, lifted up my arm to measure it. So that was that was one of the adjustments I did um, to to tweak it during the build process. I see. So you just kind of laid down and imagined yourself reaching up to pick up a bean. And <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And nice. for, for me, that that number, uh, my tips of my fingers are basically uh, eight feet exposed above the ground. Uh, so then once I added the uh, eight or nine inches that that went beneath that basically determined the the height of those um, of the uh, tall poles on the sides. Nice. Yeah, I think that's a, a great way to do it. I, I mean, <laughs> laying down and, and reaching up seems like a great way to, <laughs> to measure it. I mean, it's, alternatively, it's you have to build it and then do the same thing once it's in place. Yep. So might as well just just test it out. That's, that's great. Right. And then here, th is this a part of that same uh, it is it is and then um uh so that would have been a connector at the base so uh, the the base has it's it's just just under three feet wide mm -hmm. so about a foot and a half on both sides so these are like little kind of base stabilizers uh, what, what i realized actually after building this is that even with those base stabilizers and the the piece of pipe in the ground that i still wanted it to be more stable mm -hmm. so i i actually took some um uh, some kind of plastic coated metal wire, put an eye hook into one side of the box, went up over, tied it, and then down into an eye hook on the other side of the box. Exactly. Just to, because okay. it is eight, eight, eight feet tall. And even mm -hmm. though it's got not a lot of things that the wind can catch, I, I did notice when it got quite windy that it needed to right. be a little more stable. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. This is really smart the way you did this. And so is this on the, the vertical wall trellis? That's on the vertical wall trellis. And then on the tomato trellis, I used some of your uh, two hole connectors and just went right into the into the inside edge uh, of the box. And that thing is not moving. So this is a, quite a stable, um, strong kind of, uh, uh, this secured it, I think, quite well uh, to the box on, on all four, I did this. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's a great thing um, for sure, because a lot of people have that question, you know, how do they secure this whole structure, especially if it's tall. And so I think the way you did it was, 
was really smart because not only did you use the two hole straps to just secure the vertical, but you've also got it. You said about eight or nine inches in the ground. That's right. Nice. And then on the other one, this one, I like the way you did this. So there's a four way connector in the middle. Yep. You've got the two um, you kind of stabilizer legs coming out. That's right. And there's also still some vertical pipe in the soil buried, which is great. That's right. And then you added these to, you know, add exactly. stability, which is great. They're, so you, they're more, di they're more difficult to see on the broader photo, but there, mm -hmm. there are, are, are two of these uh, sets in, in total that I just, I hook went, did, did one loop back down, got it nice and snug. And I think nice. that does give it just that extra bit of stability. Yeah. That's an, that's an awesome hack. Awesome uh, technique. How'd you come up with that? You just, <laughs> you <were> thinking <laughs> uh, I, about it. <laughs> I, I, I happen to be hanging some lights for my wife's birthday party. So mm -hmm. I, I had it. And then I just put two and two together. I was like, well, what if I just do a loop? I had some extra eye hooks. So just nice. threw it together. <laughs> that's great. Really smart. And then here's a close up, I guess, of the, the vertical. Like, um, That's the dream. Wire. So if um, uh, hopefully in a few months, those go up all mm -hmm. the way uh, uh, eight feet. And I, what I'll do is I'll just add more clips uh, as it goes and keep keep uh, pulling those uh, sucker leaves to make the growth, to, to uh, make the growth vertical. That's great. And so that is, is that on this, this trellis here, the boxier one? It is exactly. Okay. Exactly. Cool. So you got the box trellis. I think the way you did this with the nineties in the corners and yep. then the four ways in the middle is That's a really right. universal way to do a trellis for anybody that, that wants to do one. If you want to just do a simple trellis like this, then you just need, you know, the nineties in the corners or, or, you know, kind of looks like a three-way connector. And then you do the four way to basically just add a vertical pipe and just allow you to keep going forever. I mean, you could do this same design and do 60 foot and long keep, if you wanted and keep rolling. That's right. Yeah. You just add a four way every, you know, five or so feet and then add a 90 at the very end when you're ready to cap it off. Uh, so that, that's great. Yeah. And just for, um, uh, this is my first time, uh, with maker pipe. I was mm -hmm. quite impressed just on how on the thickness and sturdiness of the parts. So those, those things are, are beefy. Uh, I also love how the nuts and bolts, how you all left space so you could assemble them on the ground without mm -hmm. the nut interfering with it, it laying flush. Um, and just that, that on that uh, T connector, the part that they, they actually just hook together to give you that extra mm -hmm. uh, firmness when you're assembling, um, really, really well designed and just all, all the parts, the feels of the edges. So just exceptional kind of quality. Well, great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for that. Yeah. We appreciate that feedback. Glad you, glad you liked them. Uh, you did some really awesome builds with them. So it's really, really cool to see. And I just love everything about this with the, the cattle panels and the box and the cages for the tomatoes. And then you used the, is this chicken wire? Um, it, uh, it isn't chicken. I think chicken wire might be hexagonal, but it's like half inch, just okay. uh, mesh. I, I, it, it, it could technically be like a hardware cloth. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's. I think that's the proper name. I think somebody corrected me on a video recently when I said uh, chicken wire, I think. But that's great. How did you secure that? Same thing. Same yeah. thing. How did you uh, how did you attach it to the the pipes? Oh, good 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 question. I used some um, some metal uh, zip ties. Okay. Actually. Um, and then uh, it it actually came or the the roll that I selected was exactly four feet wide, so mm -hmm. I only had to do one cut for height. So just to nice. to minimize uh, minimize the cutting time sitting there going along the bottom. Oh yeah, that's that's really smart. Good thing to keep in mind, so you don't have to you know cut out this entire you know rectangle. It, you exactly, just just one cut. Nice. Very smart. Nice. And it looks like it worked out great for um, the width of everything. In that original kind of layout, um, I wanted to, um, we're very much tomato lovers uh, mm -hmm. here. So that's why there's so much uh, square footage dedicated to them. Mm -hmm. But then uh, did want to leave some space for like peas and beans and whatnot. And then um, by putting the, those two kind of tomato towers on both sides, it both gives the structure a little bit of extra stability. And nice. then with the, the, the remaining effectively 10 feet that's left in the box, we thought that was um, about that. That was a, a, a good use of other kind of vertical um, uh, vertical uh, trellis type uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. um, happened to use the, the four foot roll, which then left six feet for um, beans to um, spiral up. Nice. Yeah, that's great. And so I imagine you just did something similar with the the uh, the wire that you used to kind of pull everything down, you Ex just wrapped around and went back exactly. down. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. Uh, and then in the um, in the little bit of space uh, between that minor pole, which is mm -hmm. laying in the in the center and the edge, just planted things like kale, lettuce, um, 
uh, they can kind of grow. Um, actually, with the, the 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 shade of the of the peas and the beans will actually help those um, once the once the summer starts getting getting rolling here. Nice, that's great. How did you secure the the cattle panel? Is it the same thing? The metal zip ties? Exactly. Just uh, around that uh, picture frame, basically. Cool. That's great. Well, you did a really awesome job. I really appreciate you you sharing these photos and. And also jumping on the call and, and sharing everything as well, because I think this will be really useful for a lot of people wanting to do trellises, whether they want to do, you know, kind of that that box design or if they want to customize. That's kind of the beauty of of conduit and DIYing something like this. You know, you just customize it to your garden and everything like that. So thanks so much again for joining me and sharing the details and you have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Jake. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye bye.